I don't know what an iron worker makes, but I know it's not cheap. And if you are standing in their way, you've, and you take that away because of their own actions, not because you guys don't like it, but because of their actions, uns they're unsafe, they don't finish their welds, they're failing their tests, whatever it might be, they have failed, but you are to blame in their minds. Well, today we had active shooter. We had the Sacramento Sheriff's Department. They came in and did a four hour presentation to better enlighten us of the different scenarios that we might be exposed to here at the training facilities. Hi, my name is Nate Gergich and I am a Sergeant with the Sacramento County Sheriff's Office and I am here at the University of Iron Workers Association. Part of my job is the instruction of and execution of uh, active shooter training. My hope today is to give a little bit different viewpoint from the active shooter and that's actually surviving it. I'm part of the Threat Assessment Unit for the Sacramento County Sheriff's Office as well as the Violent Crime Squad with the Federal Bureau of Investigation and here today to speak about things we've seen and experienced with active shooters. Did anybody know that over the weekend there was 15 homicides in Chicago this week? No. But did you hear there was an active shooter in Colorado? Absolutely. Part of one of the unfortunate things that we've seen with these individuals is they plan methodically uh, on what they're going to do. It's not just a snapping type of event, but they decide. They decide what they're going to do. They carry out that attack to try to increase their death toll over what the last guy has done. In doing this type of uh, class that we are instructing people on how to survive better and continue that the process of really surviving long term. And unfortunately what's happening is that this is gaining speed, especially among some groups. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit more. But as you can see, there is a rising curve uh, with these active shooter events. Today I learned that as um, we work up front in the hall, that it's very important that me and my coworkers have a plan because we're like the face of the hall and that we need to um, have a strong plan and communicate with each other in case something were to go on. You know, if there was an active shooter, it'd be such a fluid situation that you'd have to take it however it came about, depending on how they came in, how they were acting, you know, so I, I would uh, try to get out and protect the apprentices as much as I could. So what iron workers can do, if ever really attacked, would be offer quick pieces of intelligence, leave your phones open, uh, call 911 as soon as humanly possible, escape a building if, if feasible, help the injured, and then get out. Um, if you're going to run, you run like there's no tomorrow. If you're gonna hide, it's the, the biggest game of hide and go seek that you're going to win. And if you're gonna fight, you're gonna fight like your life depends on it because it does. There is opportunistic people who find a target that is going to be softer than others who choose to carry out that attack be it a school, be it church, whatever it might be, there's still a plan going in, but they don't have a necessarily an ax to grind with them. The key signs of an active shooter could be somebody that has some personal issues in life, issues like uh, family, losing a girlfriend, losing a wife, losing a job, so forth and so on, so they get angry. Another sign is when they actually talk about certain situations that seem very, very odd. They'll mention something to you like, I'm tired of this situation and I'd like to take care of it. Yeah, I'll maybe don't show up to work today. So some of the things that we took away from today are the best ways to make sure that we're able to stay safe and prepare ahead of time to be ready. Taking a few steps now and mentally rehearsing what to do can help you react quickly when every second counts. Ultimately, what we would like to see is people understand that survival is possible but it's also through working in concert with not only law enforcement the iron workers firefighters ems and so forth to come together to save lives i definitely feel like iron workers should be taking this course um, just because we do work in bigger crowds of people and it's just better to have um, a setup a plan i would recommend this class uh, definitely for anybody involved with uh, education and our apprenticeship and training to be a great safety topic for uh, weekly safety meetings for uh, job sites and uh, stuff like that because you never know where these things are going to take place. So it's, it's just creating the team that trust factor and yeah. lines of communication. You can come up with all the plans you want, the reality is you've got to be able to deviate from that plan too. Absolutely. What's important is knowing who, who you can rely on. I'd recommend that every iron worker should receive a, a training similar to this. If you could send the active shooter to the hospital, he deserves it. So I want to thank everybody who was able to come today. We, as law enforcement, see this as a valuable thing. And the only way that we can increase the survivability is to train people and have them actually attentive. Thank you.